Okay, so let's see if I can uh, go through this report. Page eight. Wow, this is this is great. Um, this saves me a uh, lot of trouble with you guys. Let me make sure my mic is working here. Testing. Okay. Yeah, this uh, this this image saves me a lot of drama with uh, another image. Um, but now, let's. With that said, let's uh, look at the anchorage here, as I described to you guys before. The anchorage. So there is the profile of the cones, the overlapping steel that I talk about that blows out. Let's see if I can do this. And so here's your steel, your steel, your top steel and bottom steel. And they're set at 90s. So let's do the reversal of that like this. And, excuse me, I put it on a diagonal here um, just because I can. Uh, this looks like they clean the deck up to, you know, the plants are there. I've seen some images before this. Uh, yeah, they clean this deck up. Wow. Significantly so. This, is, this deck has been cleaned, um, um, cleaned up. There was a... Uh, let's see if I've got my orientation correct. This one could be right behind... Mm. All right, I got to give this some thought. <clears throat> so here's the profile is what I'm talking about. You see, go in, out, in, out. And let's delete that. And this is the rebar reinforcement inside here. Let's see if we can do this. So it, I'm turning it away that way, west, making the rebar go west and east. Um, well, from, from the end to the west direction. And the top steel, let's have a little different orientation. Let's turn it uh, from west to the east orientation. Oh, now let's make them close to each other. And now you see where this is made. Let's put that over here so you can reference it. Now you can see how these are made. And we go out here five feet. Here's our, our, our fracture plane roughly here. So here is where I theorize that the, um, that I couldn't find in any, any uh, research papers, so I'm owning this one, um, that a, a cantilever action is developed, made by the securement from the rebar from the wall coming up, and it, uh, so I'm, I'm, we're taking liberties of the way I have it configured. It comes up and it, it, it is uh, interlocked with this steel here through either wire ties, literally wire ties, or just by um, the uh, concrete interlocking it. Wire ties are not, it just holds it in place. It's not how you actually lock it. So, I mean, how did they really literally come in contact with each other is, is a question. And, or did it um, come out as a cone shape? So, here I have that now. Now, let me do an overlay of, take liberty here with some concrete. And let's just use this as one sample. When this deck right here tries to rotate down, so here's the five foot mark here. Here's the rebar top and bottom, and the concrete you have to put in your in there for your own imagination. You have to add it. But here's our rotation, and our concrete is uh, well, uh, the concrete and steel would behave as one at this point, and this is where we get our rotation and our drop down to here. As it does that, it grabs the rebar, the reinforcement, um, because it's interlocked, and it rips it down and that's where you get the spalling of rebar down to here rotate it like this out rotate it like you see it uh, like hooks out of the wall all the way down explaining how it was grabbed and pulled away because it was interlocked there I state that this rebar that's down from the wall surface here I'm taking liberty with, with the uh, I want you to visualize this going down to the um, under to the, the in the face of this wall system down to the floor, not over to this tile, if you will. And that gives it its pinned connection. That pinned connection gives it its rigidity, a strong rigidity here, a strong back, out to about five foot. So here's the deck now, and let me bring that down here. So here's your concrete back here, literally, and out to about five feet is where it's, if you think of it like a critical shear zone where its reinforcement is greater than the tributary area, or like around a head. But now we have a, in a shear plane action, I call it right here, meaning 
uh, I guess you can call it a, a critical shear plane, a something of that nature, um, where the where the, when this goes down with the scratch marks, the rotation doesn't start here. It starts somewhere about here. I'm theorizing, and actually I got it down by the tile, but in this image we're go we're going to use it up here because I'm allowing the data to tell me where to use it. I have a better image that shows it down here, but this appears to be uh, you know more in line here with this imagery. The uh, um, so the rotation once it punch shears punching shear takes place around this column. Incidentally, uh, no um, critical shear zone is presented above each one of these heads, save this uh, one here. But that's probably interlocked, locked in by the weight in the interlock of the columns above. The and this is indicated. Also with all of the, what I call the sausages of the building collapse, where you see that none of the columns buckled. They all had a sausage, uh, a connection, if you will. They were like little sausage links, and each sausage link was the floor location. As we look, as we, as we see here, so the rotation, if I can zoom in here, uh, magnifier. So the rotation... Here's a scratch mark here and a scratch mark here. This is the steel right here. Not this one, but this small one. And there's another one on this side. The, the scratch is down this guy here. This one scratches down the face over here. And it's telling you that um, the original rotation, and here's the top of the shear heads, uh, uh, steel, um, bent over. It's telling you that it didn't drag on this wall here that it, it separated, and there's some steel there that just scraped, because we don't see the, the there. I'll, I'll present another photograph better in the, in the future, perhaps. The Over here to your left, this would indicate, so the rotation happened, that it's right about here, it just goes down. It no longer can hold the rigidity of it, because it would look like this, if you can imagine, so it would be very slight. Very slight, and this is the column. Let me put it over to the column. So here's our wall here. Um, I'm going to do this. That's our fl our wall system, and so here's that. Now I'm going to do a, move this up so you can keep it. That's my five foot mark here. So five foot here. With this one, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take some liberty here and help you out. And oops. Oh, okay. So now. Watch how, if I could swing this, it swings away, right? But the hinge point is here, not not there. The hinge point is there. So it would be it would come to rest on some vehicles under here and maybe crown and fracture. But it would still have a uh, some some engagement over there. Let's say there's a car right about here. It would have some engagement there. But now if I do the rotation, it starts to rotate. But it's not for free. The other side is also engaged over here. So it, it stretches, it, um, the steel slides in the concrete, all four, all, all directions, slides in the concrete, releasing. In this case, as we look at the rebar, this side is released. So that side is slid in. This side stayed anchored. Um, this is a piece of rebar going up also. Not to be confused, it's not together. There's, this piece stops right about there. This is a larger piece. So this goes across the head. And then to, to the other side also. In fact, you see the kink. That's where, if you put it back up there, that's where it did its uh, rotation right there, and it deformed the metal at that location there. This one got deformed in a uh, right about there. This this is not scratched all the way down. There's a slight scratch here, so it might have been a little rock action going on and, and an impact, and then a little scratch, maybe three inches long or so, right about here. It's not here. So it tells its story. It tells its story. You know who would be really good with this? Would be, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. All right, so there's some fracture tile, but by now we have the fire department's hose um, over, the, over the wall, not through the wall at this image. But they are laid out here pretty good. And this image doesn't present it, but it's probably behind us because it would be a hole here. So, yeah, I'm not sure my position exactly with that with that piece of concrete rubble I was referencing. We have um, our rotation. Yeah, I can do that. 
So we have our, uh, it starts going down, and this side's going down too. But I just want to show you this reaction down here. So at this point, it snags. Let's see, it's this was more rigid here. Ah, oh, great. So this is more like that cantilever action. I'm telling you that I was, the rigidity of it. So there's a, a, a our, our our hinge point is here. Not not so great, you know, but it's there. Some some stress. This is probably deflected, you know, like that instead of, you know, something like that. But not back to there. That created even more torque action inside here. It's going down, so you got a rotation like this at the bottom half here, putting this in compression um, and trying to pry out the top side. Oh, but here's the rebar condition here, the placement. So it pries out the whole cone system. Now I want to know if they have the if we can see it here, and then we'll come up and uh, I'm doing this draw. I'm doing this just because I saw this drawing. I did not look at the rest of this report, so you guys get it as I see it. So you can get my my unadulterated, um, non-corrupt version of it. Well, it's corrupt once I make some statements, but as long as I know it's corrupt once I'm making those statements, I can always retract them right, as long as I don't own them, you know, as long as I don't dive too deep into it. I must own this. Um, I have to leave room for more data to give me a better explanation and move to it, allow myself to move to it. So here's our, 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 our this looks like, if we're looking from this direction, standing here, this would look like this. They look like slots, and it might be like this. So I show the rebar integrate integral like that, but in reality, it might be something like, you know, the 90s. Don't 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 think that this is like that 45 or whatever. It's it's a 90. All right, and it's engaged over here, and it's it's overlapping in the wall and coming out, looking like this. But they're more than likely not. Um, let me get that right. More than likely, it probably didn't overlap fully like that. More, probably something like like that's high. This one could be low. Visualize that's a possibility there. Now there's some possibilities. Some of them went like that and created that that action. But I see that when I look at the wall system over here, I see these slots. They look like this. They're 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 kind of not. They're they're they're, they're Kind of like that, like separation like that. And I'm guessing the separation, even though I can't quite tell, might be 12 inches at the base here. So these little uh, spacing from this cone, uh, from this cone I'm identifying it as, to over there. That spacing is uh, probably like that. Remember the rebar interacts. Some of it popped off. It pulled out and some of it stayed behind and it just fractured right here. And so you would be able to take apart the concrete and find an embedded piece at an angle to prove or disprove my uh, statements. Don't say it. With that said, I want you to guys to understand this. So we're going to go to page four. I, I like and I dislike this uh, person. You know, you can't have, you don't want to um, have a total, oh, the guy's just great. You don't want to have a, if you have it that way, then you're just following 100%. And you're not. You know, you're not making your own opinions, if you will. You're coming to your own conclusions. But what I'm going to triangulate with and use in, in my favor to show you guys um, how I work also, this person says, must, not, not should, whatever, must find a single valid hypothesis and disprove the others. So when I go after these other posts such as Miami Herald or Tool Time or um, NIST, or Papa Smurf. Well, Papa Smurf went after, if you guys read his own stuff, he said, the people out there that speculate need to shut up. He, he's telling you he must control the narrative. So if you've got anything to say, you need to shut up. He said that. So he's quite an aggressive old man. You know, I say old man because, you know, he's 80 plus years old and he's, he doesn't take any tea for the fever, as this old man taught me once. He says, oh, you don't take any tea for the fever. Took me a little bit to catch on, maybe a 30 minutes to catch on because I never heard the phrase phrase before and then I realized okay people take tea they get fever and a person that doesn't take tea for the fever well they're just tough and hard as nails so that's what he told me about myself you don't take any tea for the fever I'm like oh okay so 
Uh, Papa Smurf didn't take any tea for the fever. He's just like, shut up. And it's, it's his own, it's his own wordings. Maybe, maybe, so this is tab open. Maybe I can, um, I'm looking at the tabs above, so bear with me. Um, so right here, the Palm Beach states, uh, and I'm going to not take any tea for the fever and give it to him in a second. Lay some pipe. So, Buckling, for everybody who thinks that this system buckled, I say to you, show me where it buckled. Show me where a column buckled. I don't have any column buckling, but I have joint failures. That is where the plate slabs interact with the columns. But I don't have buckling. All right, so let's go ahead and delete this. I'm not going to come back to that. Um, we have the NIST, obviously, already. you got to guys come to my video on that if you want to see the title right here. Come to that and watch it so you can see the NIST is, you know, is just craziness. This is where the 29 was, where the excavator is now, just tearing it up. But but look at these columns over here. These are the sausage links, I call them, meaning one floor to the next, and they're connected like sausage links. And there are some here, and here's some one here, and here's another one here. And they didn't buckle, even though they had all the floors collapsing on them. I've seen not one column that showed it buckled. I see where joint failure happened. I see where they destroyed it, fractured, fractured it, but that's not buckling. I see that, but I don't see um, f uh, buckling. Going back to Mr. Smurf here, well, we don't see buckling. He's checking the columns over here, and yet there's no indication that buckling took place. So he's looking for a reinforcement inside the columns where his placement is, but we don't have that as an as a problem. So. Uh, the Papa Smurf is playing very cagey and playing the public. And as I told you, my video content is now going to be debunking engineers and putting it out here and slamming them. And I'm, I don't care where the chips fall. They're falling. All right. And if you guys don't like it, you can move on. You know, go, go. you know, you, you, you've got other problems. Engineers have a uh, self-esteem problem. All, most of them do. They don't have any, uh, they lack charisma. And if they lack charisma, they don't know how to uh, engage in relationships and not being engaged in relationships, they suck at communication. All right, so they can't be real. Well, Papa Smurf, you know, he's pushing the, the 80, 80 change, you know, so wish him a longer life. And the, uh, you know, because this has nothing to do with that. Remember, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Maybe Papa Smurf will give us some data. Well, he did in this image, allowing them to photograph that he's looking in columns. It tells me, you know, using data and my system of uh, the amygdala theory, First you get data, then you make a conclusive file, and then from there it's protected by the amygdala. Well, looking at this data, he's in charge of, these, of what's going on here. So if he's in charge, he's telling them to check the column. If he thinks he's telling them to check the column, he's thinking that, oh, either, either two things. He can't identify that the column, there were no buckling out there, which is probably more than likely true, and he's just spitballing, throwing everything at everything. Or he's saying, hey, look, i got to run the tab up. I'm going to check everything just for the hell of it and just make it look good and, hey, I'm on the clock. I know guys that do that. I'm not one of them. I would say, well, this doesn't make sense to check there. If anything, you want to check the joint connections here where the plate slab connects to. Plate slab. Where the slab connects to the column. You want to see how that's making out. How, what kind of love is make going on there? All right, so that's the monitoring there. These things are not, you know, that uh, going that direction. They're not buckling. Now, let's show the no tea for fever man down the bottom here, his own quote, as I'm, I think it's a quote I recall. I only looked at it a couple hours ago, and it took me forever to get this work. So, um, we're going to find out which foundation they, they actually used and then examine the soil, okay? That's going to come into play. Wait for it, guys. I don't know if I'll get it in this video. The very bottom, I think he says it. Uh, Kilsheimer said that while armchair quarterbacks, end quote, quote, right, quote, end quote, including other structural engineers who have not inspected the debris, float rumors, stop George, about what might have caused the collapse of the South Tower, they should be taken with a grain of salt. Agreed. Some of these of those rumors, salt water intrusion, a sinkhole, incidentally for all you people that think that water is, can be, is bad, it actually can, can, can improve your attention, your, your, your forces against it. Columns against the piers. 
So uh, not sure why you're hating on it so much, the swelling. So it's not just for free. You just get to check mark it off just because you say it's water intrusion. Um, a late added penthouse, penthouse, shoddy construction, or a host of other things will only be proven or disproven after a thorough investigation, he said. I like this. Oh, but then he adds, they, quote, they need to shut up, end quote. Kill Schammer said, no period, so he must have said more, of the seemingly endless myriad of whatever. They are just scaring people is what they are doing. Well, what's wrong with scaring people? Isn't he scaring people by going to check a building so in depthly, you know, and they didn't tell him they should, you know, while we're doing this, um, shouldn't he have given uh, notice like the like he gave notice to everybody else? The walls might cave in. Shouldn't he have given that notice to that building? We're going to check your building to see if it's structurally sound because it's the same as that one. It might cave in. And that's why we're checking it. Shouldn't he have given them notice that they should possibly, you know, go stay somewhere else while he does this, you know, long term until it's all figured out? Well, it turns out. Papa Smurf was wrong, wasn't he? Because they hired their own engineer, apparently, and they came up with they got to do some structural, much more structural in-depth repairs than Papa Smurf saying that he'd move his own family in there. So you people upset with me calling Papa Smurf. Well, I'm not on the, I'm not a, uh, you know, liberal, guys. I'm not a liberal, so I say what's on my mind. I don't worry about feelings. Feelings. Mm. A flat plate floor system is a reinforced concrete frame. System with a uniform thickness that is supported directly over the columns or the load-bearing walls. So you guys always ask, was it side-mounted, top-mounted? Well, you, you, you can see that this is referencing, you know, you build up and then you keep going. But that connection is the whole thing. That's the failure here. Now, let's go over one. It's the testing that NIST did. NIST wants to find, I believe, subsidence because it's going to... Um, uh, allow federal money to come in there and do all types of things that they want to do. Also control the narrative, too. But as you look at this testing system, this is what it's supposed to look like. And NIST, on the other hand, tested a... Um, tested, and so this is what it looks like. Tested the top of the pier, uh, top of the column, above the, above the above board. I did a long video on this. It turns out that I loaded it up and YouTube nixed the volume on it and already deleted my primary video. So that was brilliant on my part. I didn't keep the video. So now you're getting the short version. This one had a beautiful troll in it. How I started showing uh, how um, NIST um, was driving low tech. That's a hammer, let's call it. And I'm taking liberty with the shape of this so you can see it better as a hammer. This little action here. And they came out there when they were testing the uh, the pool, the uh, column over there. Boom, boom, boom. The column testing that they drove it down and to get to see if it was really taking 50 tons. Let's say it takes 50 tons. And they said, okay, it does 50 tons. Well, what matters, I don't care if it failed at 40 tons. What really matters is what was the true load on it at the time of collapse, uh, the time before collapse. And that pool deck was not putting... Um, 40 tons on this or 50 tons but yet the pool deck had that huge capacity to take even more than that but I'm having a little Columbo move on you because this is the column if I put the column uh, how it truly is there is a uh, piers down below in the ground one two and three right about where they were doing I think it's a three pier set up and they look like this little triangle here right here and they put the uh, column, they pick, they go figure out which one. What, watch me now, play with them. You know, I like playing. They put the, they, they do the three of them to make this nice and stable. And then they, 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 uh, they say, hey, look, let's, um, which one's the best one? Which one's had the best resistance? They say, oh, this one was 51. They go, okay, good. Well, you choose and now put the column over top of this one. And that's what they did. And when and this was testing, they were testing this straight down the one pier. All right, I'm, I'm giggling here because um, that's not what they, that's not true. What I just said. They make a a uh, your pier cap, which goes across all three of these. It looks like that, roughly. In this case is kind of triangle shape, and then pretty much center line of those three um, on top of the pier cap with the rebar sticking up. 
goes the column that you see it in the the goes the column so if you were to drive this column down as you see here through 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 start impacting it more than likely you see the column over here to your left you're going to create a fracture fractures and you will get settlement you will get displacement of this column because this col this pier cap was not designed for impact loading like that these pressure pressure deals they were designed for that they drove they were driven in I don't know about driving them in 40 years later to test them. Uh, you know, that might be a little ridiculous, but they, they were driven in. All depends if uh, the soil's around it and all. But they didn't even open it up to inspect them to do this. They just went right on top of here and started driving. Well, rebar and things like that might be engaged in there a little bit lower inside here. They cut it open, but not deep enough. They should have been way out here to inspect this, make, to see what kind of soil conditions there were as far as Whereas this even was avoided of soil around this one, you know, don't do too deep or you're going to change your whole, your whole answer, but you can start down here to start testing these one, two, and three, which means you would remove this. You can use a plate load testing. Hopefully the tab is open. We just load it and load it and load it, you know, 50, 150 tons you put on top of it. And well, this was never designed to take 150 tons. And so you might have some buckling happening on this column it was never just it was designed to take the pull deck this is transferring equally across this and they they they, in, they play along as this one drives in the soil gets tighter around it and as this one ultimately when all three gets in get in there this gets to be a pretty tight zone when they lose their testing equipment even it can interfere with the uh with the supports around it uh, effect of tightening the tightening uh, the area up the so you get your impacts here into your pure cap and you would get this fracture possibly some some uh com fractures and displacement of this concrete as it's trying to bridge over these three here so as it's trying to bridge the uh the steel was designed to to, to transfer to all three of these equally all three equally and now they're just slamming into it at the top and so you can make it fail by doing that you can get a test to fail you drive it drive it good enough this wasn't designed for impact like i said it was designed just to transfer the load and compression not by impact loading these were designed to work in impact loading and from there so that their test is quite defective don't say I want you to see this now. We'll do a narrow. Oh, now you heard that. Let's do this. By a high strain dynamic load test. Here we go. A large drop weight is necessary for the test. And this is what NIST did. And in this case, it is modular. A crew stacks the modular blocks and, and strain transducers to okay, the Okay, I want you to see this reduce I'm fast forwarding These some of it. You can come to the video and find it yourself. But um, So this gives you your acceleration all and they do extrapolations with it and movement These instruments measure how the shaft responds to the impact of the drop weight the measurements packs the increasing input energy so you see the, the how you had to get around here but it's on a pier uh, it's on a pier not a pier cap all right I'm gonna get rid of this this is gone so over here we have flat pl flat slab is a reinforced concrete slab support it another definition for you okay so um, well, the supporting columns on a square slab called drop panels. So this is a step one. This drop panel here, there's another one over the top of it. It's to give the effect of a larger critical shear zone I told you guys about. Critical shear area. Um, as we look over here, it would look like this. There's a 45, there's another one, and there's a column. So it, trans it makes a, a larger area to do that transition over. Well, it's very interesting that they understand that by columns, you're supposed to make it real rigid and come over here and get this larger um, distribution of loads so it can make it over to the column. But then at the wall, all bets are off. They just say, you can get your time to the wall. It's continuous. That's ACI for you. Without thinking that this created a more rigid uh, section than the tributary area. The tributary area would, have, would, would deflect, and this would not deflect the same. I mean, it's very critical to understand that, that the tributary area will not deflect the same as, the, as this area here, the drop panel area. This is more rigid. Being more rigid, therefore, if it's, when your deflection takes place, it's going to gradient off, if you will, until you get here, and the strains are going to be out here. In our case, this wasn't present. 
and it just pretty much went from left side to right side. I'll do a seesaw version to help you understand that in a future video. I already have it uh, set up or planned. So let me see what I have here. Two more multiple tabs. Um, okay, so this is another uh, the dynamic load testing. Oh, sorry. Uh, we'll mute it. We don't need that. It's um, PDA, the dynamic. Okay, let's see if I can fast forward it. Um, I thought they had. Okay, so there we go. So here it is on the piles again. And then the pile cap would go across it. In this case, it would probably be a, a, a slab, a raft slab. I state that because no one will put these columns that close going all the way through a building. So this this is the these the I'm having a little fun. So they built they put these con, uh, concrete columns in there also to help do it. No, they're just distribution blocks to help lift this up so they can distribute the load equally around the outside of here. They they literally come in lower down with a crane. Look, they even had a shim this one. It looks like a shim. Um, and they put it down. This box is here, and then they can lift it up, and they'll drop the load on it. And that's the size of that. So now let's see if we, if I have, looking at the thumbnails here. Um, okay, so you, you see what it looks like. The crane goes up, the uh, li um, elevates the weight, and then drops it from a from a distance. All right, so we already went over that one. So then we have, looking to your le my left, uh, bear with me. So here's your, your pile load testing again. Again, it's pile load testing. The thing is, you know, if they knew, they, they would calculate how much weight should be on there at, of, that, of that deck, and they should just use something like this. It's really, it's, it's peaceful. It's not as aggressive. The impact, it won't, you know, each impact could cause fracturing, obviously, when you pick up concrete, use a jackhammer. So what do they do to test this uh, pile system over there? On a, on a, on a uh, pure cap, they used a jackhammer, basically, what they used. So it was designed to fail. Their testing was designed to fail. So my man, this all comes around full circle. So my man over here, my man over here states, must find a single valid hypothesis and disprove the others. Well, it's pure as it, you know, and this is me throwing him out now, throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Well, I'm going to throw him out just for a second, and we'll bring him back. We'll bring him back in this comment, obviously. But the, they, so they, it looks like the testing is in error. There, so far, this is the, uh, fra the, the gathering of evidence. They destroy evidence and then gather it and then say it's evidence. They destroy the, 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 uh, the pad they lift up, throwing away the evidence. And they say that's evidence. Now they're taking, they, they're testing, but destroying the evidence as they're testing it with this, with this hammer, if you will, this impact driver into the, into the uh, pure cap. The pure cap was never investigated, meaning open it up, cut down air, measure it, check the rebar for it. And I'm, 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 I'm saying that because I don't see any concrete open up large enough to be able to look at that pure cap. Let's see if I can get you the, um, the, let's see if I get this right. Too far. I'm looking at my tabs above. This is going to help you explain a seesaw, the deck. I'm going to leave this as a little hint and give you a little bit of it. But this is a deck on this side, deck on that side. One loads too heavy on one side, pulls more on the uh, reinforcement that goes across the column head. This should be the column head, and it will it pulls it pulls down. And when it does that, is this anchorage good or that anchorage good? Well, obviously on the other side the anchorage was not good. It slid out the other side. All right. So there's your your deck. If you can help you out, put four, put them in an axis if you like. I, I don't care, but I want you to think of. This side and that side, and there's the column, and run the, th the seesaw in a 360 degrees all the way around, 360. And, well, here we go, like that. Hmm. Hold on, I'm trying to find... I'm trying to find the, uh, the uh, I have the plans open. I want to show you. Okay, here we are. So there's that triangle footer I'm talking about. 
I, this is three. Here's the four one. No matter what, you're screwed each time. You go to test it. I think it's the three out on the deck. Um, the three, the the three they use one, two, and three. As you can see, they appear to be circular in nature, round. And the column would be going here, as you would think they should. And there's your shape of it. And so they're driving it down, boom, boom, boom. And you can clearly see you can make it fail. Now we go back to our buddy here. And our buddy is, okay, so this is page three. Let's just pull to the top. So I did a video, Glenn Bell, and I, I you know, I've, I've seen his videos. I, I knew he was part of this investigation. I knew of him. I've seen his videos, the teaching videos. I think he has some extrapolation issues that are wrong when he's teaching a student live on school. But that is not too, um, well, frankly, not many people understand concrete behavior as I do. Yeah. Pat myself on the back on that. I challenge people to, to remember. I got a real challenge on that. Prove me wrong, a thousand bucks. I got another one that says prove me wrong, ten grand coming up. Deals with the same thing, but prove me wrong. You know, yes, prove me wrong. ACI, it goes there. We can give it. We can give it to charity if you're not allowed to take it. ACI, come on, join in. Ten grand, we'll give the charity. Whatever you know, however we like to do it. Prove me wrong. It's a one-way bet, also. It's a one-way challenge, rather. Meaning. It's not an illegal bet. It's it's a challenge, and I'm giving away the money. It's not a bet, but it, you know we just say bet you know in, in, in words. So in other words, one direction. If if you win, we give it up. Oh no! In a ten thousand dollar one, I said we'll do pu we'll publish your results so everyone can learn from it. And uh, of course, uh, no one's going to take me up on it. They haven't taken me up on the one thousand dollar bet. It's free money. That one's real money just going out, not towards, I don't think I'm giving that towards any charity or any education. That's just like, boom, here's your grand. 10,000 ones going towards we're going to teach people. Must find a single valid hypothesis and disprove the others. This is why I attack people like Papa Smurf, NIST, uh, anyone that puts data out here. And if they're, if they're correct, well, then we run with their data and see if we can, we can expand on it. If they're wrong on some things, we gently give it a soft nudge. If they're, you know, if I, if I'm still evaluating whether they're right or wrong, me, yes, me. If I'm evaluating whether they're right or wrong, I then do what he's done. I'm gonna see if I can disprove it. If I can't disprove it, I go, hmm. It stands until disproven. It stands until disproven. No matter who says it. Multiple potential causes and contribute and contributors. Incidentally, they they hit say the rusted material is part of the rusted steel. They're gonna do deductions for. Um, but if that's the case, well, then how can you say that it can pull down a column for everybody who says it can pull down the column in the garage? Well, they are very extrapolated that that it was with the core sample, et cetera, that, that that was all deteriorated over there. You need that solid wall to yank it out and to yank it out. This tells of the condition of the uh, structure at the wall by seeing it yanked out. And that's down here. By this being yanked out, it didn't just break away. You see the breaks here? This was this tile was up here, incidentally. So this is a little bit of an overlap. You don't quite see it, but right about here. Okay, let's do this. So here is hmm, a screenshot. Hold on. And so here's your screenshot. Here is the here's this, right? So for the most part, then overlay it back here. Well, I'll probably have to rotate a bit, but um, because it the way it goes in. Let's see. So let me get some let me get some extrapolation going on here. Okay. So there's your profile here. Imagine that profile underneath those red pavers. This profile here under the pavers, because these pavers were up to this wall. And so they came off beautifully so, the, uh, the, uh, the overlay and the, the concrete. So the overlay, what's keeping this rigid and not breaking apart is that there's an, so a side, look, if we could look through the side view, this would be, okay, let's do that as the overlay. And, I'm, and the overlay goes back. Now let's put tile on top of the overlay. Okay, these are tile. And then below that, we're going to add this concrete. Then I'm going to stop short. 
because we have concrete in the wall. And yes, I'm taking liberty by making a sharp edge. It looks like that. And at the wall, we have this. What's left. And again, I'm taking liberty because I'm making this sharp. Sharp edged. Um, and so this reaction happened. The fracture happened here. And when it rotated down, so rotation down. And there's a rotation down. This lift up, lifted up, lifted, ED, lifted up uh, the elevated along with the pad. It rotated, so rotation is this way. When, it, when this rotated down, this pad, this rotated up, fracture here, this just lift off, lift off, see it lift off nice and clean, step back, you know, grind down the wall, and then came to a stop. So this is what this looks like. This is why we see the tile so nicely here. All right, so I think I should end this video and, and don't save, wait a minute. Maybe I should do that, leave that there for you guys. And we'll get to, so save, we'll get to this back here the fractures back here and, and this this piece right here looks like this piece here and this fracture over here we'll, we'll get to we'll get to all of that but I guess I'll give you this now so as this rotates remember that rotation is like that and that's where we get our bra fractured tile here why is it fractured here well, look because it's engulfed with part of the uh, column resisting the rotation down and so you get this uh, action here and there's a tile out here and there's another tile there so you get that there. It kind of ends that already, doesn't it? Let's, it's 25 pages. I'll tell you what I'll do. Because uh, even I haven't seen it. So with me here, you, I saw this image. Yeah, they were, you, mm, no, they had it marked off in, with, uh, with uh, zones. Oh. Well, this is freaking great. With that said, I'm going to be able to share with this image presented. I'm going to be able to share some other stuff with you. Uh, because this is public now. This is public, so I'm going to share another image with you uh, in a few days. Pretty deep and pretty uh, pretty out there. Because um, now this is public, I, I can I can do it. The uh, so here's the four ears here. Here's that rebar that goes down and is connected on that side. So the engagement, the anchorage was lost on this side. Biasly, so it looks like it's tapered off, but it's got good paste. Nevertheless, the anchorage is lost on this side and rotation. Uh, it went down that side. All right, so that's the side that stayed anchored. This is the side that released. Upon releasing, what happens? The seesaw drops on the other side. Where the hell's my seesaw again? Let me look at the tabs. Hold on, guys. So imagine a seesaw, and you release on the other side. You jump off the seesaw. When you jump off, um, when you jump off, uh, I don't think I got rid of my seesaws. Hold on. Yeah. So if you jump off your side of the seesaw, that seesaw jumps, falls down. Of course, this side is released also, so it goes down. They go down equally, if you will. Well, they, they, they're no longer supported. You jumped off, if you could jump off. But we know you can't jump off, can you, if someone's on that side? Because as you, as you lighten your load, they go up even higher, and you'll get your package ripped if you're a guy. So, the, uh, so this is the, looks like the rebar coming up there also. So it looks like the anchorage on this side was the one that released. There's a bias to that. I won't tell you in this video. I'll see if somebody can bring it up. Oh, what the hell is this? Remember, I'm looking at this the first time, too. Penthouse. Okay, so that's their penthouse. Uh, well, you know, look, the deck is what did it. The penthouse, the building was stable until the deck um, um, did what it did. So even if the penthouse was added. And it's not only just a penthouse that, that this isn't talking about. There's the addition of the, uh, the bump out to the penthouse. There's an addition of some porches that wrap around differently. So, you know, I was, obviously this watches my content because they got me shadow banned because I slammed them immediately when it happened. If they did not, I'd welcome to challenge that. I have this book. I showed it to you. It's very interesting. This triangulates back to ACI. So ACI is part of this investigation. They should also be at fault then for allowing any in, uh, defects. I will show you that the elevation of the north part of the building and the south part of the building are the same pretty much. And with that said, when you look at the debris field in the garage, what are you really looking at? That's a little hint. We'll see if someone can beat me to it. 
Um,